Hey everyone, it's Jay here with uh, Review All The Things and I just wanted to do another quick update video. If you watched my previous video on the installation of Rock Country's 12 inch front light bar on uh, my Polaris, you'll remember that uh, I didn't like the switch that came with the Rough Country light bar. So I have the high and low light bar so it comes with the three position switch. But this is what's called a V-style switch, and this doesn't fit in the Polaris switch blank cavities. So what I originally did just for the time being was I purchased an, an L, a, a, a V to L switch adapter from OTR Switch Guys. And I had that in there for a little while, but I finally had some time to install the switch that I had custom made from OTR Switch Guys which is a three another three position switch that I had uh, custom lettering put on for light bar high, light bar low, and this is a lighted switch. So it has a number of terminals on the back, a few more than the Rough Country switch because it uh, has two spots for power for the top LED for the switch and the bottom LED for the switch. And then you have your normal um, inputs and outputs for the two different positions. So in my case, it'll be turning the light bar on high and turning the light bar on low. Um, so uh, this is an L series switch. So that's what you want to try and look for when you're using these on at least a late model Polaris. Um, otherwise you can get these adapters from them uh, pretty cheap. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to install and wire this switch. So not only the toggles work but also to light up the switch. So I'll take you over to the Polaris and I'll show you what I got going on. Okay everyone so we're over at, at the Polaris now and this is our original Rough Country switch which is I have installed right now to show you how to uh, we're going to show you how to check which wires do what so that when you go to hook up to your new switch you know uh, which wires you have to hook to which terminals and then we'll go through the wiring uh, of the new the new switch. So we have one, two, three, four wires here. So we have black, two blacks tied together. We can ass generally assume that that's the ground. So we'll prove that out. We got a white wire, a red wire, and another red wire. So to remember, this is a high low beam light bar that I put on. So our top position is our high beam, and our middle position is nothing, and our low beam is the low position. So in order to figure out what wire is doing what, we're going to just use a, a test light and we're going to check, we're going to turn the key on. We have our test light hooked to ground and we know that we need to have power coming into this switch so we're going to look for that first. And I happen to know it's this middle red wire. So you can see we have our test light lighting up as we check this middle wire right here with the key on so we know that's the incoming power and then we check the other terminals and we don't have anything and that makes sense because our switch is in the off position now if we want to determine which wire is controlling the low beam and which one is controlling the high beam we're simply going to switch the put the switch in the high beam position and we can see our high beams are on. Again, we're going to take our test light and we're going to find the wire that now is getting power, which is being fed from this middle wire. So we checked our white wire first and we have no power. We check our other red wire and there we have power. So if I turn the switch back off, the high beam's turned off and we don't have any power there. Turn it back on and we have our power again. Now we can pretty much, with the process of elimination, know that our white wire is going to be our low beam control, but just to prove it, we're on the white wire, the switch is off, nothing happening, turned our high beams on, nothing, turn our low beam on, and then we have our power off, on. So we now know what all of our wires do and the black wires are the ground. So um, I had already tagged this one red wire. So there's two red wires, so we wanna make sure we know which one is which. I'd already tagged that one as the high beam. Uh, so now we're gonna 
hook up our new switch. Okay, so we have both of our switches here. So this is the Rough Country switch, and this is the OTR Switch Guys switch. And you'll first you'll notice right away that there's more terminals on the OTR switch than there are on the Rough Country switch. Uh, the Rough Country switch is uh, wired a little bit differently internal. So the Rough Country switch gives you the RC logo will light up in a certain position, and then this LED down here will light up in a certain position. Um, the OTR switch is going to have the outputs for high beam, low beam, ground, and constant, and the power source. But then we have a couple extra terminals that are for the power feed to be able to light up the letters on the switch itself. Uh, so we're going to have to add some wiring to be able to make that happen. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, but first, I'm going to hook up the four wires that we have just to test and show you that this switch works and then we'll work on making the switch letters light up themselves. So all the OTR switches come with a wiring diagram and it tells you exactly what each terminal does so that makes it pretty easy. Uh, in this case we're going to be using all of the, the pins on all, all of the terminals on here eventually. Uh, but if we start with number two, which is, when you're looking at the back of the switch, you're looking at the diagram. So pin number two is this pin right here. That pin is for your incoming power source, such as battery, switch, source, etc. So we know that this red wire that I didn't label is the power source. So this is the, the wire that's going to get power from the battery when the key is in the on position. So we know that we are going to hook that power up to pin number two. Let me turn my key off first. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up to pin number two. Okay. Next, we have pins number one and number four both labeled as the same thing. Outgoing to the relay accessory or equipment for both of them. In this case, I'm gonna be using one to power the low beam side of the light, and the other one's gonna power the high beam side of the, high, of the light. And <clears throat> you just have to make sure you hook to the right one to get the right position. So in, in, in this case, on this switch, I know that um, pin number four is gonna be the out for the high beam. And this is, you can just trial and error this. Um, if it doesn't control the right side of the light, just you swap them. So I'm going to hook the high beam up to pin number four as one of the outputs. And then my white wire, which I know controls the low beam side, is going to go to the other pin, pin number one, which is this pin right here. And that's going to control the low beam side of the light. And then I have our ground. And if you look at our wiring diagram, or you can read number nine, number nine is going to be the ground, uh, which is for the internal lights on the switch and whatever you're trying to power up. So we're gonna hook that up to pin number nine. And then we're gonna go ahead and test to make sure we have them all in the right place. And I'm gonna turn the key on. And we have nothing happening so far. So I'm gonna test light bar high, and my high beams come on, or the high beam version of the light side of the light comes on. Now it's off, and now I have my low beam working. But like I said before, these descriptions on the switch are not lighting up. That's because we don't have any wires hooked up to power those lights. That's what, that's what these two terminals are for. And I'm gonna show you how that works, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna wire it up. So what I have here is just a, a jumper wire. Now, we know that those pins are the positive side of the upper light, positive side of the lower light for their instructions. That just means that it's, that's actually for the light in the switch. 
So we know we have to get power to these two terminals in order for the light on the switch to light up the letters to, so they'll work. So as a test, I'm just going to show you how, how, that, how we know that's going to be what we need. So we know this middle red wire right here is our accessory power. So I'm just going to lift that up a little bit so it's still making contact with the terminal. And I'm going to take my jumper wire and I'm just going to gently carefully clip onto that terminal to grab the power. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key on so I know I'm getting power. And I'm going to touch this bottom terminal, which should light up light bar low. And if you can see that, we have light bar low lit up. Should be can can get that. So we know that we need to send power there. And then just as another test, I'm going to take the same jumper and I'm going to go to the other terminal, which is the positive for light bar high. And you can see there, light bar high is lit up. Now, we want them to both be lit up. So we're going to take power. We're going to take this red wire, and we're going to splice off this red wire, key on power, and we're going to run a terminal to each of these terminals on the back of the switch. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. So what we need to do here is open this harness up a little bit. So I have plenty of room here. So I'm going to open this harness up and I'm going to get some more room to, to work with this red power wire. And we're going to work up upper, we're going to work up higher in the harness and we're going to splice off of this wire and run two terminals to each of those terminals on the switch. Okay, so I thought the video was rolling, but it wasn't. Uh, so what I got together is my, I got a couple pieces of wire that we're gonna need, and I have a heat shrink butt connector. Uh, there's a couple different ways that we can do this, uh, but what I'm gonna do, which I already did, which I was gonna explain to you first, is I pulled this harness back and I went ahead and I cut off the terminal that's using that we're using to power the switch and I've stripped that back and I'm going, what I'm going to do is put this butt connector on the wire that I cut and then I have a big enough butt connector that I'm going to put this wire along with two other terminals and two other terminals that I'm going to make in here and then I'm going to make a one to three splice that we can use to power the switch and power the terminals that power up the lights for the lettering. Okay, so I've stripped back the wire in the harness. I'm actually going to fold this. I cut enough back. I'm going to fold this over to make it a little thicker because the butt splice I'm using, they don't have reducers for butt splice splices, so it's one of the larger ones. So I want to make sure I get enough wire in there. So I'm going to put that on, and then I have my crimpers that are specifically designed for this type of butt connector. So we are going to crimp this sucker down. I'm actually going to take it off and put it in the tool first. It's a little easier to maneuver here. I'm trying to put these things on. that on. Give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. Now we're going to take 
our two other wires that we're going to make our terminals out of, and we're going to strip those. And I'm going to take all three that I created and I'm going to twist all of these guys together. And I'm going to put them in the other end of this butt splice and we're going to crimp it down. a little tug all those wires are in there and now we're going to put female terminals on the ends of both of these red wires All right, so what I'm going to be using is just a standard female wire terminal that you can pick up at any auto parts store. I would have liked to get the heat shrink ones, but I don't know, supply chain or whatever's going on these days, I couldn't find them. So I just grabbed a couple of these normal ones, and I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink tubing, and I'm going to put it over the wire, and then I'm just going to heat shrink it just for a little bit of extra protection. Don't forget to put the heat shrink on first. Move that up out of the way. Put the other one on. Crimps. Put another one on. Plug, no issues, slide our heat shrink down, I'm not going to heat shrink any of this right now, we're going to hook everything up and make sure it works the way we want it to and we will then finalize everything. We got our switch, now it doesn't matter how you run the powers but I ran these a little long so that they could get to either end of the switch so we know that we're going to put our power again. We forget, double check, we're putting our power wire to terminal number two, which is right here. And all the terminals on the side on the switch are labeled, just in case. So number two gets the power wire, number one. is going to get the low beam output. Number four is going to get the high beam output. You can run any 
whichever one of these powers that we just made, we want to number 12, which is the positive side of the lower LED light. And then we can obviously run the other one to number 10, which is on the top here. And then we're going to hook up our ground. And now for the moment of truth, we are going to turn the key on. And we should have both of these lit up, just like the factory switches. And there you go. We have both of our switches hooked up. Both of our lights are on. We'll test high beam. You can't see it, but high beam is on. Low beam is on. So now we're just gonna clean up our wires, tape everything back up. Well, first I'm gonna heat shrink everything. And then we'll tape everything up and put this baby back in the dash and we will be all done on this one. So we got our heat gun. If you wanted to use a lighter you could, but heat guns are cheap. You might as well do it the right way. Not set your Polaris on fire. Bring the pole, the pole a lot of this out of the way. Be careful. I'm a little short here, so I want to make sure that while I heat this up, I don't heat up anything. I don't want to get too hot, so we're just going to be careful here. So we got that buck connector done, and now we're just going to do the ends here to make them nice and secure. I'm going to let that cool down for a second, and I'm going to wrap the harness back up so, and with electrical tape and make everything nice and tidy. Alright, so I spared you from having to watch me wrap up the harness, but I wrapped it back up nice and clean with electrical tape. And this is an L-series switch, which is the match for the factory Polaris switches, so we're not going to need the adapter. I'm going to be able to put this right back in the dash, and it's going to look just like it came from the factory that way. is. Lights up just like the factory switches and everything works just as intended. So I'll let you guys take a closer look. So there you have the OTR switch guys switch in there with the custom writing. 
L-Style switch matches perfectly with the or L-Series switch that matches perfectly with the factory Polaris switches. We'll turn this on here so you can see it light up. So you can choose your color. The little camera's not focusing great, but the blue matches the Polaris blue. And everything works as intended. So we're going to call this one a wrap. So I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, and I appreciate the recent uh, re my recent subscribers. If you haven't seen the video where I've installed the uh, Rough Country light bar, I'll, I'll leave a link to that at the end. Uh, please like and subscribe. I appreciate the support. And remember, don't be afraid to work on your own stuff. We'll catch you on the next one.